Okay, let me tell you guys that the answer to this right here is equal to two third. Hmm. Let me go over the main point with you guys right here. The main thing that you have to be careful. So we are taking limit as n goes to infinity. So let's look at the first part. On the top, we pretty much have one. And then when we plug infinity on the bottom, we have infinity on the bottom like this. And one over infinity, this goes to zero. And I agree. Next one, you pretty much have square root of two on the top, which is finite. And then you also have infinity on the bottom. Infinity times this infinity, okay, still infinity. And this is going to work zero as well. And so on, so on, so on. And of course, we are adding a bunch of this up. Yes, zero plus zero plus zero. If we only have three of them, this right here is equal to zero. But how many of these terms do we actually have? We actually have n terms, right? Because look at, we have one, two, three, up to n. We have n terms. And when n goes to infinity, in fact, we have infinitely many of these zeros. And this is almost like the situation that we have infinity times zero in determinant form situation. Can we draw any conclusion right here? No, right? And the reason because this right here, it's not a slowly zero. This could be like 0 0.0000007, I don't know. But it's not a slowly zero. So when you add up infinitely many of these zeros, the answer is actually not zero. So you have to do this one really, really carefully. And look at this term right here. When you take an approach to infinity, this is you know, going to zero. So seriously, we have infinitely many terms. So do it carefully. And do not just say the answer is zero. This is actually a pretty common Calc 1 hard question, a hard Calc 1 question. Um, yeah, and in fact, I've done similar questions in the past. You can check out my other videos. I will have the links to those videos in the description for you guys. But let me show you guys the easy part to do this. And the hint that I know this is the easy part of the limit is that I noticed we have the 1 over n. And we have the 1 over n, 2 over n, 3 over n, and then n over n instead of the square roots. This right here, it's pretty much a remote sum when we're doing the integration from scratch, right? And the function that we're talking about, you can just ignore the 1 over n for now, where the function we're talking about is the square root. And let me just work this one like backwards, and I will do a short version in this video because I've done like a longer explanation explanations in other videos already. So this, in fact, is trying to calculate the following area. Of course, we are talking about square root. So we are talking about the square root graph right here. This is just y equals to square root of x. And I will show you guys that this is how we can use the rectangular method to find the area under square root from 0 up to 1. And how do I know? It's because I have the 1 over n, 1 over n, 1 over n. This is telling me that I have an interval with length 1. So let me just say 1, right here from 0 to 1. And you might be wondering, why not from 1 to 2, or why not from 7 to 8, and things like that. It's possible, but this is actually the simplest case, especially that inside right here, look at, it's just 1 over n, 2 over n, 3 over n, and so on. So it's suggesting me that this is just a pretty like uh, innocent term x like this, right? Anyway, what we do is look at this interval which is with length one, and you divide this into an equal width rectangles. So the base for the first one is one over n. So this is one over n, and you are just going to draw a rectangle. So you are going to go up like this. And what's the height of this? Well, of course. You're plugging 1 over n, this is the x value. Just go ahead and plug it into this, and you get 1 over n instead of the square root. So the area of this first rectangle is what? It's simply 1 over n times square root of 1 over n. What's next? Well, the next rectangle, remember, it's n equal width rectangles. So it's also going to be 1 over n. But 1 over n plus 1 over n, it's 2 over n. So we have 2 over n for the x value here. And then if you go up from this x value, 
you can find the y value and you can make a rectangle and this uh, y value here is just 2 over n inside the square root and this area of course is just width times the height so you can just plus this is still from here to here 1 over n that's the width and then the height is square root of 2 over n and so on the next one is 3 over n for the x value and so on so on so on right and of course you just do a bunch of this in the end this one it's the same as saying n over n right this is really nice so you can pretty much do this and then you have the 1 over n times the square root of n over n and once again the purpose of doing this is that to find the area under the curve of the square root of x curve from 0 to 1 but to get the exact value for the area it's actually the limit when you take the n goes to infinity meaning that you are trying to make the rectangle as small as possible in the width so that the approximation will be better better and this approximation is going to be uh, approximating better and better to the actual area and the actual area is the limit this area what's the best way to calculate area under the curve of course integral from 0 to 1 of the function square root x dx and I'm going to leave this to you guys just do whatever you need to do you end up with 2 sir for this integral and we are done that's it the main point is just to kind of talk about that you cannot do 0 plus 0 plus 0 infinitely of this so-called zeros in the limit situations and then conclude that the answer is 0 it's not the case it's actually 2 thirds because we have an area like this